Examination of liver. Abdominal examination is ideally performed with the patient in supine position. Stand on the patient's right side so that the liver is easily accessible. Take consent from the patient and expose the abdomen. Inspection of the liver. Begin with the general inspection of the patient. Localized asymmetrical distension of the abdomen is due to gross enlargement of the liver. The presence of distended veins around the umbilicus signifies portal hypertension. Look for ascites and cutaneous manifestations of chronic liver disease. Palpation of the liver. Place the hand flat on the abdomen with fingers pointing upwards. Ask the patient to breathe in deeply. Move your right hand from the right iliac fossa gradually upwards one centimeter with each inspiration until a sense of increased resistance is noted. Record the size of the liver as finger breadths or centimeters below the right costal margin in the midclavicular line. Locate the liver edge by the fingertips. Palpation using the hooking method is performed in obese individuals. Stand by the patient's chest and hook your fingers below the costal margins. Press firmly and ask the patient to take a deep breath. You can feel the edge of the liver pressing against your finger. The dipping method is used in severe ascites, which may mask an enlarged liver. Place your hands flat on the abdomen and dip your fingers into the abdomen with each palpation. This displaces the fluid temporarily to the side and facilitates palpation. On palpation, document the size, edge, character, and consistency of the liver surface. Also, note the presence or absence of tenderness and movement with respiration. Liver tenderness. The normal liver may be slightly tender. Greater tenderness suggests inflammation or congestion. If tenderness is elicited, describe the location, depth of palpation required to elicit it and the patient's response. Percussion of liver. Percussion is started anteriorly in the right midclavicular line from second intercostal space downwards. Repeat in the anterior, mid, and posterior axillary lines and the scapular line posteriorly. The normal liver dullness is in the fifth space in the midclavicular, seventh space in the anterior axillary, and ninth space in the scapular lines. Record the percussion note and its extent. Tidal percussion. This is done to differentiate upward enlargement of liver or subdiaphragmatic abscess from right-sided parenchymal or pleural disorder. If on deep inspiration, the previous dull note in the fifth right intercostal space on the midclavicular line becomes resonant, it indicates that the dullness was due to the liver, which had been pushed down by the right hemidiaphragm with deep inspiration. If the dullness persists, it indicates underlying right-sided parenchymal or pleural pathology in the absence of diaphragmatic paralysis. Liver span. The normal liver span in an adult, as judged by liver dullness, measures 10 to 12 cm in men and 8 to 11 cm in women in the midclavicular line. Enlarged liver span. Hepatomegaly is seen in liver metastases, multiple or large hepatic cysts, early stages of cirrhosis, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, alcoholism, hepatic vein outflow obstruction and infiltrations like amyloid. Decreased liver span is seen in viral hepatitis, autoimmune liver disease, and in late stages of cirrhosis. The abdominal venous hum is a continuous roaring or whining noise that can be auscultated using the bell or diaphragm of the stethoscope. It is diagnostic of portal vein hypertension, secondary to cirrhosis. Brutes are audible vascular sounds associated with turbulent blood flow. Auscultate for brutes, using a stethoscope above, and to the left of the umbilicus, the iliac fossae, epigastrium, laterally in the midabdomen, or over the liver. An arterial brute indicates stenosed vessel aneurysm or a malignant circulation. Friction rub is indicative of hepatic cancer with inflammatory changes. To get more such high yield medical content, don't forget to subscribe.
The city Ahmed. The easiest and fastest way to take advanced clinical history.